Tube Sports presents the 1981 Ohio High School Football Championship. Today's Division I championship game is between the Cincinnati Molar Fighting Crusaders and the Canton McKinley Bulldogs. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Akron Rubber Bowl. This is Pat Hughes along with former Buckeye All-American running back Jeff Logan. Jeff, the championship, Division I. This is what these young men have been shooting for since August when they began practicing for the 1981 season. Pat, what's really amazing is that you think of the number of high schools in the state of Ohio, and I think in the back of every kid's mind, he thinks, man, are we going to be good enough to get to the state championship? This is Division I, Class AAA. This is the big boys, and these are the two best teams in the state of Ohio at that level. And since the best high school football is played in Ohio, in all the country, we're looking at really the cream of the crop in high school football in this nation. Well, Jeff, when you're talking about Canton McKinley and Cincinnati Moeller, you're talking about a pair of teams, each with 12-0 and 0 records this year. Moeller has an amazing winning streak, 45 games in a row, 82 of their last 83. But McKinley also has a pretty good tr tradition. Well, tradition-wise, I don't think there's any two teams in the state of Ohio that have more of it. Canton McKinley is dating back 20, 30, maybe 40 years. That They've always been a state powerhouse. On the other hand, Cincinnati Moeller, in the 18 years that They've had a college football, or a high school foot, almost college, a high school football <laughs> program. They've just been incredible. The last six or seven years, they've been almost unbeatable as far as the state championship is concerned. You couldn't have two more tradition-minded football teams. Jeff, the weather here, a little bit of snow is falling in Akron, but it's not that bad. I think they ought to be blessed that the weather's as nice as it is as, as it is this late in, in, in November uh, in Northeast Ohio. It's going to be cold. The wind is coming out of the open end of the stadium. It will, might affect the passing and the kicking game a little bit, but overall, they got to be pretty lucky. Some of the fans still trying to get in here to the Akron Rubber Bowl, as you can see right there. But, Jeff, you know, last week we saw Upper Arlington against Cincinnati Moeller. Arlington has a very good offensive team, and yet Moeller shut them out 14 to nothing in that game. And on the other hand, Kent McKinley, in 12 games this year, they have an amazing eight shutouts. Well, defense is so very important, especially when you get to this level. And both defenses are tremendous. Moeller a little bit bigger. McKinley tremendously quicker. And, and I think that's going to be their real asset defensively. Well, there's a couple of standout defensive players, and since we think it might be a defensive battle here today, the nose guard of Kenton McKinley, a young man by the name of Stan Jackson, number 30, big and quick. Well, Stan Jackson is a great football player, and, and his real asset is his great quickness. He's had 15 quarterback sacks already this year. He's the Northeast Ohio Defensive Player of the Year. He is a good football player and the key to that McKinley defense. And on the other hand, Mike Harmeyer, outside linebacker, number 40 for the Cincinnati Molar Fighting Crusaders. Now, last week, there was a running play. Jeff Decker, the quarterback of Upper Arlington, was carrying around the right side. Jeff, I'm sure you remember that play. Oh, yeah. And it didn't, it didn't look like there was any way he was going to be stopped short of a first down. Well, Harmeyer's not a very big football player, six foot 205, very small as, as opposed to a lot of his teammates on the Cincinnati Molar team. But I think he's one of the most hard-nosed kids they have. He's their leader. And... You mentioned the, the play on Decker where his pursuit was just incredible. He's as quick as they come. Jeff, quickly then, what do you think McKinley has to do to win today's football game? Well, McKinley's always been a big play team, and they have got to go out there and force mistakes, for, force turnovers. Offensively, they've got to have big plays. If they go out there and play passive football, they're going to get beat. If they play aggressively, they have a chance to win. Cincinnati Moeller going for their third consecutive state title. What do they have to do? Well, contrary to what a lot of people would believe, Moeller just can't walk out on the field and win football games. This is a great McKinley. Kinley team, they've got to go out, they've got to play aggressive football, they've got to be mistake free and not give McKinley the chance to make those big plays. Jeff, it's going to be exciting. There's a lot of electricity in the air here in the Akron Rubber Bowl and we'll be back in just a moment to take a closer look at today's game. back to the Akron Rubber Bowl. This is Pat Hughes along with Jeff Logan. The Division I Championship coming up in about 10 minutes live right here on Cube T1. Glad to have you with us. Right now let's take a look, a little closer look at the two teams in today's game. First of all, the Molar Crusaders. Take a look at the scores of their regular season games right there. They went straight through the regular season, 10-0. And right there, nobody really tested them very much, although they beat Maslin 24-6. Jeff, that must have been exciting. That was a rematch of last year's championship game. 
Well, anytime you have a Cincinnati Moeller Maslin football game or a Cincinnati Moeller McKinley or Cincinnati Moeller Arlington game, the tradition speaks very heavily, and, and that there must have been a lot of, uh, of uh, excitement in that football game. And then, Jeff, later in the schedule, Cincinnati Elder gave uh, Moeller a pretty good battle. Elder got off to the early lead in that game, but Moeller came back and won 15-7, a strong second-half performance in that contest. Princeton gave them probably their toughest battle of the season. Princeton led that game 17-7 with about four minutes to play, but Moeller came back never saying die. They scored two touchdowns in the last four minutes, including the winning score with about 10 seconds to go. And that's always a great rival, that's Princeton and Moeller. Now, Princeton's a good football team. We saw them against Upper Arlington, and, and Arlington just mauled them. But I think Princeton got to be a better football team as the season went on. Uh, you know, this, this Moeller football team, a little different than ones in the past, simply because uh, this team has been behind a couple of times this season, Pat, and they normally have not found themselves in that kind of situation. But the one thing that it has proven to me and to you and to their coaches is that they have great character. They don't give up. They keep coming back, and they're trying to preserve that long victory streak that they have. Jeff, let's take a look on the other side of the fence right now. Canton McKinley this year. They are also 12-0, and and look at that. They started off the season with a bang. Four shutouts in a row. And then finally, St. Ignatius got a touchdown off them. But in that game, St. Ignatius scored the touchdown on a blocked punt. And so, really, you could say it's five shutouts to start the season. Let's take a look at the other games right now. As you go down the list, Alliance and then North Canton Hoover, Jeff, that game meant a little bit to you right oh, there. That's my old alma mater, Pat, and they played pretty well against him, losing 9-0 and, and had a chance to win the football game, but I think what's important, look at all the goose eggs for the opponents. Uh, eight shutouts during the season. Uh, great year for McKinley defensively. They've only given up 32 total points in all in 12 straight football games, including the two games in the in the playoffs. So, and then their big win, the, the season uh, ending game against Maslin every year, they won it 9-6 to six in their home field at Fawcett Stadium in Canton. Now, Jeff, let's move to the playoffs this year. Moeller, in the regionals, they got by St. X, 18 to seven, and then last week in a game seen live right here on Cube, 14 nothing over Upper Arlington on a frozen turf down at Dayton's Welcome Stadium. So they have been very tough in the playoffs, low scoring games, and I think we may very well see the same thing here today, a low scoring affair. Let's take a look at Canton McKinley. Now they, on the other hand, have run over a couple of playoff opponents, Parma Normandy falling 34-6, and then last week, in a game that a lot of people, Jeff, thought was going to be much closer, McKinley rolled over St. Joe 24 zip. Pat, what's really amazing, they played here in this same rubber bowl that we're here at today, and they had the same field conditions as we had down in the Dayton uh, Welcome Stadium with Upper Arlington and Moeller. And it, it's really amazing that they can score 24 points and in their great running back uh, for McKinley. Sid Lewis. Who, I'll get it sooner or later. Who, Sid Lewis uh, just had over 200 yards in that football game, so uh, he must be a very gifted performer also. I'm looking forward to seeing him myself, Jeff. There has been one common opponent, and if you were paying real close attention, I bet you knew that it was Massillon this year. Massillon losing to both uh, McKinley and Moeller, 9-6 to McKinley, and then 24-6 to Moeller. And Massillon, as we said, they played last year in this championship game against Moeller. Final score was 14-2. to Team from Cincinnati winning their second consecutive title in their fifth and six years. But Massillon, they have a great program. In that McKinley-Massillon game, there were a couple of big plays. One was a, a pass from Rick Worstel to Nick Faulkner, 82 yards for a touchdown. And then the fine place kicker for Canton. We'll talk more about the kickers in a minute, Jeff, because they're going to play, I think, an important role in today's game. Zaides. Uh, Nick Zaides kicked a 44-yard field goal, so two very big plays for McKinley against Massillon this season. You know, these two teams have played against each other a couple of times in the near past. Last year, as we mentioned in the uh, uh, regular season, we didn't mention this, but they did play in the second regular season game. Moeller beat McKinley 34-14. This game here today, a rematch. Interesting, Jeff, that uh, these two teams played in the 1977 state championship game. Well, that gets back to tradition. I think in the years to come, you're also going to see Moeller-McKinley matchups in the regular season and in state championship play. Cincinnati Moeller, they have won five state titles all within the last 10 years, right there. In fact, five of the last six, trying to win their third in a row right here today. On the other hand, McKinley, they also have had a, a few championships dating back to the 30s and 40s. And then their most recent state championship win was in 1956. Let's take a look now, Jeff, at the offenses and defenses, at least from a statistical standpoint, this season. On the offense, uh, you can see that McKinley has maybe a little bit better balance 
on offense, but both teams very prolific in the scoring department. Very much so, and very close there. I think the reason Moeller has not passed the ball more is that they have not had to. They have such a great running attack. Jeff Klaus, number 31, who had a big game against Upper Arlington last week, and then, of course, Hiawatha Francisco, who we recently talked about, number 43, great running back, junior running back, who's rushed for over 1,100 yards this year. On the other hand, McKinley, very well balanced, and their quarterback, Wurzel, uh, does a good job of throwing the ball and uh, has very has some very good wide receivers. We're still last week had two touchdown passes in the semifinals against Cleveland St. Joe. Let's take a look at the team defense now. These are yards allowed per game. Both teams very, very tough. Look at that, Jeff. McKinley on the very bottom line there, the points allowed 2.7 points per game. Now it's hard to believe that any defense in any level could be as stingy as McKinley and Moeller have been, but you look at McKinley, an average of less than a field goal a game, give a lot of credit to those defensive performers. They're not big, but they're very quick and aggressive. And the thing really impressive about it, McKinley has played a fairly tough schedule. You'd think with allowing only 2.7, they're playing in a league that doesn't have boys. Yeah, well, I think what you, ha <laughs> I think what you have to realize there is, is, Pat, that Ohio's on the computer system, which rewards those teams that have a tough schedule and those that do not have a tough schedule could go through the season 10-0 and, and not get in the playoffs. All right, Jeff, let's take a little closer now. A couple of more stats. The turnovers. These are losses of possession this year. Moeller has lost the ball 20 times, 10 each fumbles and interceptions. McKinley, on the other hand, they've been very greedy. Once they get that football, they hang on to it. Only well, 13 in 12 games. That's the thing a coach would like to see, and I know that... Uh, uh, Ted Bacigalupo, the head coach of, of Moeller, is a little bit concerned about the amount of turnovers that they have had this year, but still not all bad. And let's take a look at the takeaways in 1981. Both teams. Now, McKinley, they've taken the ball away 42 times. They have 25 interceptions. That's uh, over two per game. And they have all four men in their secondary with at least three interceptions this season. So it's tough to pass against McKinley. No, but I think what people realize when they play Kent McKinley is that they are so difficult to run against, Pat, that you have to put it in the air. It's really the lesser of two evils or what is thought of going into the ball game. But as you can see there by that graphic of 25 interceptions, that it has not maybe been the worst of two evils. Jeff, we'll talk about the special teams and we'll talk about a couple of other quick notes. But right now we're going to take a break. Division one state championship coming up on Cube right after this. The Canton McKinley Bulldogs have just come onto the field. A roar came up from the crowd. Jeff, that's a point we haven't really considered yet is the fact that for Canton McKinley, in essence, this is very much a home game today. Last year, Moeller was playing in a home game for the state championship. That game was played down in the Cincinnati area, and it seemed to benefit them. I know that uh, their coaching staff felt that it did, and certainly McKinley has the advantage in the number of fans that are here. It's incredible, Pat, the amount of fans that are still waiting to get in the stadium, and all of them with red and black on, which means that those are all... Uh, mostly McKinley fans that are still trying to get in the ball game. There you see the Kent McKinley Bulldogs. They'll be in black pants with the red jerseys and the white numerals. On the other hand, Cincinnati Moeller, which is also taking the field, is going to be in their blue pants with the white trim and blue stars and their white you know, or their white jerseys and those adorned helmets, Pat, with the, the blue helmets. They almost look gold that they have so much, uh, so many awards on their helmets. Jeff, the special teams could be very important today. We're talking specifically, as you look at the Moeller Crusaders, about the place kickers in the game. And Ken Harper of Moeller and Nick Zaides of Kent McKinley, two of the very best kickers probably in the country at the high school level. I would think that you'd be tough, hard pressed to find many that are any better. I think only one, one fellow that's in their class Pat, that I'm sure you'll agree with me, is Greg Guthrie at Upper Ab Arlington. Absolutely. Uh, those three, I think you could build a, a football team around. Uh, those, those, they're just great uh, kickers, and that could become very, very important in this ball game. We remind you that the wind, as you're looking at the field, will be coming left to right. It's 37 degrees is the temperature here at game time, and the wind is, they say, gusting at 13 miles an hour. I think it's a little bit stronger, Net. That takes the wind chill down into the team, so it gives you some idea uh, just how cold it is in terms of wind chill today. There you see the wind coming out of the left part of the field. Let's take a look at the officials quickly, Jeff, before the opening kickoff. Don Mack is the referee. Bill Bruno, the headlinesman. The back judge is Lou Serretta. The umpire in today's game is John Weil and the field judge, Fred Church. All right, it's just about time. Moeller will be receiving the opening kickoff. Dropping back deep on the six-yard line is number four. That's Rob Brown. He also plays in the secondary. He's a good one, a co-captain. 
and ready to tee up the football. Number 82 for Kent McKinley. That's Nick Faulkner. Nick is a wide receiver and also a defensive back. Now he gets a little more distance on the kickoffs. A young man by the name of Nick Zaides, number 13, does the place kicking and the punting. We're just about set to go. A good crowd on hand at the Akron Rubber Bowl. This is Pat Hughes along with Jeff Logan. Sit back and enjoy it. We're just about underway. Nick Faulkner waiting for the signal from the referee. And the ball blows off the tee. Well, Jeff mentioned about the wind a moment ago, and certainly if it's strong enough to blow the ball off the tee, you know it's going to play a factor in today's game. Well, McKinley has the better passing attack, and in the first quarter, Pat, they will have the wind at their back, which should aid uh, their passing game uh, once they do get the ball. I mentioned their quarterback, Rick Worstell, a uh, very good passer. He's thrown uh, 80 completions this year, over 1,100 yards, and we're ready to go. Faulkner to number 11, Andy Worsell. Worsell up to the 23. He is drilled at that point by number 37, Garland Rivers. And it's first and 10 for Cincinnati Moeller. Rivers, a starter in the secondary. But first of all, let's look at the offensive backs of Moeller. Wilging, a good passer. Klaus and Francisco, solid one-two punch in the backfield. A couple of sure-handed receivers, Mahan and Niehaus. The offensive line, it's big. It averages 6'4", 232. Incredible. First scrimmage play of the game. Number 31, Klaus now changes out to a wide receiver on the right side. This is Francisco. Hiawatha ducks his head, hit by Victor Parks and Kevin Keith and also Randy Hall, or Ricky Hall rather, and it's second down. The defense of Kenton McKinley, a defense that has produced eight shutouts this year, Jackson, Keith, and White. Good linebackers, Dotson, Parks, Dine, and Hall. And a solid secondary. Remember, those guys have helped pick off 25 passes this year. And Jeff, in looking at that defense, their outside linebackers are standing up, and they're almost like defensive linemen. We'll talk about that in a moment. Francisco in motion, Wilging to put it in the air. First pass of the game over the head of Francisco. Good coverage by Garland Rivers. Third down and long, third and seven. Kind of interesting that Upper, or excuse me, Cincinnati Moeller came out to throw very early in the game. Remember against Upper Arlington, Pat, uh, they did not feel that they had to throw the ball very often. They stuck with their running game most of the game. I think that shows you some idea uh, of what Moeller has in terms of respect for this McKinley defense. They are going to have to put the ball in the air, and they brought two wide receivers in this time. You know, Jeff, last week Mike Wilging passed only five times and none in the second half against Upper Arlington. Third down at seven, Wilging. He is hit as he throws, incomplete. He was hit on the play. Still trying to identify the young man. It was number 85, Ricky Hall. So Hall blindsiding Wilging. Well, they have not, uh, Wilging has had great protection all year, and he had great protection here long enough, but he just did not bail out when he should have. That's the quarterback's fault. Great effort by Ricky Hall from his defensive end linebacker position, and Moeller's forced to punt fumble. Ken Harper has trouble with it, but he gets it away. Good punt after adversity. And taken by Ross Rankin, he is buried. Good coverage by Moeller. It is first and 10 for Kent McKinley. So the Bulldogs, after a 39-yard punt, will take over on their own 35-and-a-half-yard line. The offense of McKinley, Worstel, a passer, over 1,000 yards this year through the air. Lewis, over 200 yards last week. Torrance and Foster. And you can take a look at the offensive line. Canton McKinley, an independent school. They do not belong to any conference. First and 10 on the 35. Play action, Worstel in the air. He's got number 14. That's Fritz Montgomery. Montgomery has a first down inside Moeller territory. Montgomery also the backup quarterback finally hit by Mike Harmeyer. Good play though, Jeff. Very fancy. They're going play action to Sid Lewis, number 24. They're great tailback and he finds his receiver wide open. That's Fritz Montgomery in the flat. And you can see how lonesome he is out there. No white jerseys all around until Harmeyer finally came up and made the stop. Big first down for the Bulldogs. From the 43, number 24, Sid Lewis, hit by that huge defensive line of Moeller. Fitzpatrick had part of the tackle. 
as did Regal Summers, the number 40, that man Mike Harmeyer, the guy that Jeff and I talked about before the game. So it's going to be second down and about seven. The defense of Cincinnati Moeller. Good linebacking core. Coyne and Apke, by the way, are starting for one of the first times this season because Shane Bula and Chris Kennedy, at least Bula is shaken up. Kennedy also not in the starting lineup. We're still a pass again. He scrambles. He's fast. He puts his head down, and he's got a first down to the 30-yard line. Good job by Worstel on a broken play. Nobody was open, and he took off. Finally, Rob Brown made the tackle, but that's a good bit of scrambling by Rick Worstel. Well, Worstel, this is one of the things that he does so well, Pat. This is what Wilking did not do when he got sacked. When you get in trouble, get your rear end out of there and get what you can. Now, Worstel is regarded as one of the quickest quarterbacks in the state. That quote coming directly from Bacigalupo. Inside handoff, look out. Tremendous defensive play. That time, number 41, Pat Apke, a late starter. And Regal Summers made the hit also. But here it is again, the handoff to Renard Torrance. Well, it's the inside reverse from the wing back. And you can see Apke, number 41, just coming in there very hard. He is starting in place of Chris Kennedy, who was out with an Achilles tendon injury. And Pat, you mentioned Mike Coyne. He's replacing Shane Bulla, who broke his leg in practice earlier this week. So two new linebackers in there for Moeller. We'll keep an eye on them to see how well they perform today. We're still back, gets rid of it. Sid Lewis makes a catch. He gets away, and then he gets brought down. Number 34, Barry Larkin made the hit, but Lewis almost able to break that tackle, and that would have been a big gainer for Canton McKinley. Certainly would have been a first down. You're going to see here that Moeller got caught in a blitz. Perfect play call by McKinley. Unloads it just before Mark Harmeyer sacks him. Sid Lewis coming out of the backfield, number 24, state champion in the 100-yard dash. Pat, he can fly. If he gets outside on you, he is going to beat you. His time in that 100 meter was 10-6 last year in the state track meet. As Jeff pointed out, the state champion. First quarter, timeout call. The officials calling timeout that time, Pat, and tailback Sid Lewis, his shoe fell off uh, on that pass reception, and he's tying it up. That there's seven minutes and 32 seconds to go. We've played halfway through the first quarter, and uh, I think we've seen a lot of offensive punch out of this McKinley football team. We talked about the fact that they were going to have to be aggressive today offensively, not play a passive offense in order to beat Moeller. And I think that head coach Terry Forbes is doing just that. What a great offensive game plan. You cannot just continually run and run and run at this Moeller defense. They're too good. You have to spread them out and take advantage of holes. Here's a big play, Jeff. Third down and eight from the 28 of Moeller. Play action. We're still get some good blocking. He's in trouble, but he's a good scrambler. We're still to Lewis, close to a first down inside the 20. What scrambling by Worstel. I think he's going to come up a little bit shy. Well, he is so incredibly mobile. I'm talking about Rick Worstel. Great. You're going to see here that there's two or three times where it appears that he is in big trouble. He's trying to get a number of his, of his receivers deep. You can see him signaling them, get deeper, get open, get open. He eludes three fighting crusaders there. McKinley uh, lineman there pulls off or it would have been a clip and then he finds a receiver open and that's his tailback Sid Lewis play took a long time to open there you can see he's just about a half a yard short they need to cross the 20 for the first down fourth down Lewis outside he's got a first down to the 11 yard line the lead blocked that time by Renard Torrance Rob Brown made the tackle but Jeff you could tell that Moeller was anticipating a play up the middle. Pat, you remember what Pat Mancuso told us, head coach of Princeton? If you want to beat Moeller, get outside. And Sid Lewis does just that on a play where they needed a foot and a half. They pit sweep. I think it's a great offensive call by Terry Forbes again. Third first down in the drive. They can also get a first down inside the one-yard line. From the 11, first and 10, Worstel, draw play. It's going to go for a touchdown. Sid Lewis. What a call. Well, Pat, it appears that McKinley is going to take advantage of those young linebackers, both Pat Apke and Mike Coyne. They go on the draw play. The linebackers did not read it. You're going to see Sid Lewis, number 24, run right past Pat Apke, 41. Here's Harmeyer. Watch Apke. Great blocking. 
by McKinley. Look at the hole. Jeff Logan could have scored that touchdown, but give credit to Sid Lewis. The middle of that McKinley line of Becker, Elfay, and Dine doing a great job of spreading the linebackers for the score. Nick Zaides has converted 18 out of 21 this year. Extra points. The kick is up. The kick is good. There is a timeout in the first quarter. Five minutes and 35. Make it six minutes and 35 seconds to play. And it's a 7-0 lead for Canton McKinley. But, Jeff, you talked about it earlier. Moeller is a team with great character. Well, they, they never really knew the last few years if they could ever come back from being behind. You know why, Pat? They've, They've never, never been behind. You're <laughs> going to see the touchdown again. Sid Lewis, 24. Great block by Robbie Dine, number 69, on the great linebacker Harmeyer. And Sid Lewis, if you give him that much of an opening, anybody that can run 10, 6, and 100 meters is going to beat you on a 10-yard dash. Great run by Sid Lewis. That's his 10th touchdown of the year. Last week, Pat, against Cleveland St. Joe's, he had 203 yards rushing, averaging 9.2 a carry. Not too bad, huh? Well, right, so, you know, he's, he's had over 800 yards this year. He's been out three games with an ankle injury. Uh, so they really need Sid Lewis in there. He's a good football player. Moeller's going to get their second possession of the ball game. You know, we're down to six minutes and 35 seconds to go. Moeller's only had one possession, and that was three downs and a punt. The kickoff by Nick Faulkner. The return back up the middle by number 11, Andy Wurzel. Wurzel gets across the 30 and gives Moeller fairly good field position. There is a penalty marker down on the 27. It's a clip against Moeller. Well, Pat, speaking of penalties, uh, one thing you remember from last week against Upper Arlington, this Moeller football team had 93 yards in penalties, many of them being offensive holding. They've been plagued by penalties all year, averaging about 70 yards per game in penalties, which is very uncharacteristic of a Moeller football team. Here you see the call, clipping against Moeller on the run back. They'll have it first down, and they're marking it first down in 10. That's correct. First and 10. It must have happened before the tackle. It was a live ball foul, probably, Jeff. And first and correct. 10 here for Moeller. They're at the 14-yard line, Pat. Horrible field position to start a drive. Springmeyer and Francisco are behind Wilging. Francisco pulled down after a very short gain. Good play that time. Number 36, Walt Dotson made the tackle. Second down and nine. So hey. now, go ahead, Jeff. No, you mentioned the lineup of that defense. There's the scoring drive. You can see Lewis's 11-yard touchdown run. 65-yard scoring drive, so it's ball control. What's the lineup of this McKinley defense? You're going to see only two or three players in a defensive in a defensive stance. There's a fumble. Loose. McKinley has it on the 15. Holy Toledo. Springmeyer coughed it up, and Victor Parks pounced on it. That's a big break. McKinley leads 7-0 and knocking on the door for more. Matt, we mentioned that this is a big play team. Victor Parks, number 48, coming up with the fumble recovery. Let's see if we can see the fumble hit. Oh, it was not even put in the pocket of their running back, Springmeyer, number 33. Wilking had a chance to recover it, but you can see there, McKinley has the ball first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Play action. We're still... Incomplete to Montgomery. Fritz Montgomery couldn't quite hang on. Robbie Brown was covering. Also, Barry Larkin in the vicinity. I think Terry Forbes took that play right out of Pete Corey's playbook, Pat. Remember what Pete said on our show? That any time you have a big turnover, you go for the juggler, you go for the big play right away. And that's exactly what McKinley did that time. They had Fritz Montgomery open in the flat, and he just could not hold on to the ball. We're still now three out of four, 34 yards. Very tough in that first drive. We're still to Lewis, off left tackle. Excellent tackle that time by Barry Larkin. It looked for a moment like Sid might be able to go in for six more, Jeff. Looked like Barry Lewis, or excuse me, Barry Larkin just came out of the, uh, the 10th row in the end zone seat. They never saw him there in a second. And all of a sudden, he just appears. You're going to see number 34 just all of a sudden appear in your camera, come up and put a hit on Lewis. Mm. Only about a four-yard gain. Looked like it was going to be a first down, Pat. Good effort by Barry Larkin, senior defensive back, 6'1", 172 pounds, five interceptions this year. He's a very gifted athlete in that secondary. 
Third down now and six from just outside the 10. We're still over the middle. Incomplete going for number 83, Eddie Andrade. Andrade, their leading receiver this year. Andrade felt like he was held up or pushed a little bit, but the officials are having none of it. And it's going to be a field goal attempt for Nick Zaitis. Let's see, they're going to spot it on about the 19, make it a 29-yard attempt. Zaitis has not missed a field goal this year. And Ross Rankin, a member of the secondary, will do the holding. Rankin is also a quarterback. The kick. It's long enough. It is. No good. So Canton McKinley unable to capitalize on a first and 10 situation from the 14 yard line. And that is costly. It is still 7 0. We have 4.35 to play in the first quarter. Well, let's see if we can see what happened. He missed it to the right. And Zaidi's right there, number 13. He says it's good. And he looks back at the official and says, golly, it's no good. It went just a shade to the right. He can't understand it. <laughs> that is strange. You don't normally see Gosh. that. Now, at any rate, first and 10 Cincinnati Molar on their own 20-yard line. Hiawatha Francisco. Hiawatha did a great job to get four yards that time. Fritz Montgomery and Kevin Keith combined for the tackle, but I'll tell you, he got... He did a lot of work for four yards, Jeff. Well, Pat, that, that, that play there by Moeller is their version of the student body left, and they pull three men on the play. Both guards and the backside tackle are pulling. That's a lot of meat out there. Jeff, we should point out the Zips are the Kenton McKinley Bulldogs, and the visitors are the Cincinnati Moeller Fighting Crusaders. Second down, Francisco again. Hiawatha is stopped short of a first down. Tackled by Victor Parks. Pat, we might clarify that scoreboard for you a little bit for those people. We're here in the Akron Rubble Bowl. This is the home of Akron University, and their nickname is the Zips, believe it or not. There's Cincinnati Moeller on the sidelines. It's got to be a little bit of a surprise for them. They've dominated this football game, uh, this state high school championship game, for many, many years, and now they're down 7 nothing with just 3 minutes and 25 seconds to go first quarter. Jeff Klaus, Klaus scrambling, but could not quite get it. Robbie Dine made the tackle. Faulkner and Dotson also had a part of it, but that's short of the 30-yard line. Fourth down again. I don't believe Moeller has had a first down yet in the game, and that's true. They, they have, have not. not, Pat. They've, both times they've had the ball, it's been three and out. Whenever we played at Ohio State, we felt that if we could force a football team, say a Michigan team, to go three and out, especially at the beginning of the ball game, they become very frustrated and do things that they don't necessarily want to do. And that, I think, is the case right here. Ken Harper, a great punter, has averaged 41 yards a boot this season. This is taken by Rankin, number 12. Ross Rankin gets past the 40. So here's something, Jeff, that was completely the opposite last week. McKinley has had all the field position in this first quarter. Last week, Moeller did the same thing to Upper Arlington. Well, if there's any young football players watching the game right now, you notice that Rankin did a very good thing that time. He had room to field the ball after it was bouncing. It was not a dangerous punt to field. If he allows it to roll, Pat, it's going to go another 10 or 15 yards and take him out of good field position. But they've got the ball first down in 43, or first down on the 43. We're still in draw play. Sid Lewis, look out, he can really fly. Lewis to the 40-yard line of Moeller. Barry Larkin made the tackle. It's going to be an 18-yard gain for Sid Lewis. Pat, that play took a lot of time to develop. The back is coming all the way from your left to the right of the screen. And Sid Lewis, with his great speed, 9 out of 10 other backs in high school are not going to be able to make that play. But Sid Lewis made it look like the Moeller defense was standing still, which is quite amazing. There you see his stats. 823 yards this year. That's a lot of yards. Here he goes again, outside left. Cuts in nicely, but Barry Larkin is doing a magnificent job from his secondary spot, particularly on the run support right now, Jeff. Well, you saw Barry Larkin, number 34, come up from his free safety position, and Sid Lewis was just kind of stood up at that point. 
And we apologize for the pole that you saw there. Well, there's no way we can move those. Sam Torrey, our producer director, tried to go out there and saw those things down so you could have a better picture today. But <laughs> doggone it, we just can't do it. Lights are on in the stadium. It's a little bit dark here uh, because of the clouds. Second down and nine from the 39. Fake draw. We're still scrambling. He's very gifted in scrambling. He cuts it upfield and he almost has a first down to the 31 yard line. Jeff, he can do things that some college quarterbacks can't do. Well, one thing that they, 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 they're they a little bit concerned about with Rick Worstel is that he doesn't try and run too often. He sets up here. He actually had Sid Lewis right down the middle open. You see him 24, comes back out of your screen, but Worstel does a good job of getting upfield. It looks like he was pinned here by Don Duckworth, number 54, but he gets it up, big play, third down, half a yard. Where Stell has been the starter at quarterback for Kenton McKinley since midway through his sophomore season. He's now a senior. Sid Lewis outside right. Barry Larkin made a fantastic defensive play, and that is going to be very close to a first down. If not, it'll be fourth and inches. And since the first down marker is right on the 30, it's going to be shy, and that, I believe, is going to do it in the first quarter. Watch here, Barry Larkin, number 34. He just comes up and puts a lick on Sid Lewis and he's gonna remember all the way through next Thursday. <laughs> and McKinley's going to go for it. Fourth down, they need to cross the 30 yard line and there is a timeout at the end of the quarter. At the end of one period, the scoreboard shows Kenton McKinley seven on an 11 yard run by Sid Lewis and Cincinnati Moeller without a first down, nothing. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. Fourth down and inches, first play, second quarter. St. Louis, short of a first down. Number 99, Ron Davis. But it was really a team effort that time by Moeller. That's a great defensive stand. They ran, there's Pat, there's uh, uh, head coach Ted, or Patrick Loop on the sidelines. Watch Sid Lewis, 24, just runs into a solid wall of the fighting Crusaders. Now well, it's easy to look back and with hindsight, Sid Lewis almost turned it into a great play. Linebacker Mark Whaler, number 36, hang, held onto his jersey enough to stop his momentum. First and 10, Moeller now. Wilging rifles one to Mahan. He's got the catch, about a seven yard gain. Garland Rivers made the tackle. Mahan makes his 10th catch of the year. Pat, were you a little bit surprised at the play call by McKinley there with fourth and uh, about six inches to go for the first? Straight up the middle, you know, they have such speed outside. I thought maybe they'd go outside again, Jeff. Thought so very much. I thought they'd try and get Sid Lewis and use the speed that he has. He's not a very big back, and I think getting him outside would have been better, but it's easy to do it from up here. It's nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and two. Klaus. Jeff Klaus has picked up the first first down in the game for the Cincinnati Moeller Fighting Crusaders, and what a game he had last week. Klaus gained 108 yards and scored the only two touchdowns in the game against Upper Arlington. He's kind of the unsung hero of that offensive unit. All the, the press goes to Hiawatha Francisco. You can see what those running backs are up against today with the McKinley defense, shutting out eight opponents this year, allowing only 32 points all season. That's in 12 football games, folks. Less than a field goal per game. They've allowed only four total touchdowns also. Wilging, a reverse, it goes to Klaus. Klaus has a man in front of him. Klaus has another first down inside McKinley territory. Ricky Hall made the tackle. That time, Jeff, Dusty Stoy, 235-pound tackle, was out in front of the play. Well, and he may have clipped the man out there, Pat. I'm going to take another look just for my own edification. Number 31, Klaus, on the reverse. What's Stoy in the right part of your screen? Is that a clip? No, he didn't make enough contact for it to be a clip. Good job by the senior left offensive tackle, 6'1", 235. That is a big, big offensive line. Pat, you've mentioned they go 6'4", 234 on the average. The biggest of those players is their right tackle, number 72, John Askin, 6'6", 245. First and 10 on the 45, the deepest penetration for the Crusaders. It's a fake reverse this time. Francisco up the middle, and he is tackled by number 36, Walt Dotson. Well, and it looks like Francisco is a little bit shaken up. He's holding his left hip. You can see it there as he went down. 
It appeared that one of the McKinley players hit him on the way down, and that could be a hip pointer. Did, that, did this play call surprise you, Jeff? Well, not, much, not, not, not a whole lot, Pat, because they were setting up the play call. This is exactly the same thing, but last time he handed it off to Klaus. This time, Hiawatha Francisco keeps it. Let's see when he gets hit in the left hip. It should be coming up right there. Mm. There it is with the helmet in the left hip. And that could be a, a hip pointer. And I can tell you just from, uh, from experience, Pat, that if, in fact, it's a hip pointer, which is a bruise of that hip, that that could be a very painful injury. Hiawatha Francisco, the best running back on the sidelines now. Gain of only a yard, second and nine. Up the middle, Springmeyer. Not much there. It's tough to run straight up the middle against either of these two teams. That time, number 54, Kevin Keith, left defensive tackle who has had six fumble recoveries this year, made the tackle as he put his arms around the man, brought him to the turf. Pat, those are our people at home that are real technicians of the game. Watch a classic battle going on. Stan Jackson, the middle guard, number 30, going up against number 55, Mark Goet Goetzky, the center. Watch how this battle's progressing. Two great football players. 7-0, McKinley leading Moeller, second quarter. Wilging down the middle, incomplete. Niehaus had it and lost it. Number 80, Dave Niehaus. Ross Rankin was there to put the hit on Niehaus, but it was a ball he probably should have had, Jeff. No question, Pat. He should have caught the ball. Dave Niehaus, number 80, brother of Steve Niehaus, who played for Notre Dame. Great football player, also played at Moeller, coming over the middle. He's got the ball a little bit behind him, but he should have caught it. Wide open over the middle. Ross Rankin coming up a little bit late, and here's the punt. Kenny Harper hangs one up deep, and it's going to carry into the end zone. McKinley has it first and 10 on the 20-yard line. It's 7-0 in case you're just joining us. The only touchdown in the game came with six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. An 11-yard scoot up the middle by Sid Lewis of Canton McKinley. It was a draw play. That was a 43-yard punt, by the way, by Harper. And it is 7-0. This is a rematch of the 1977 championship game, which was won by Moeller 14-2. All right, Kenton McKinley on offense. Their quarterback, Rick Worstell, hands off to number 14, I believe, Fritz Montgomery. Might have been Stefan Forrester, number 45. Let's wait until they unpile. It was Forrester playing up at the wingback position, Pat. He came in motion as he came across, and uh, a couple of times that McKinley has tried that play, working it back inside, misdirection, trying to catch Moeller in that aggressive defense that they have going the wrong way. Forrester now coming out of the ball game and Sid Lewis is back in there with Renaud Torrance, number 32, the fullback. Okay, we got second down and seven. McKinley on their own, 23. Sid Lewis, nothing there. Look out, Sid. He ran into a stone wall that time. Pick number 99, Ron Davis, 206 pound defensive end. There to greet him at the line of scrimmage. Clock, of course, is running. Seven minutes to play. Pat, apparently Second the quarter. thinking of Terry Forbes, excuse me, is that now that they've spread out that Moeller defense, that now they're trying to go back inside. I don't know that I totally agree with it. I think they've got to keep working the outside corners on Moeller and put the ball in the air. Definite passing situation, but remember, the draw play and the screen play have worked very good for McKinley. Might be a good time for it. Third and six. We're still looking over that defensive line. Play fake to Lewis. We're still still has it. He's going to be sacked on the play. Regal Summers, number 60. Got in there to make the sack, and it's going to be fourth down. Well, you can see we're still number 11 dropping back. Didn't have a receiver open. Give a lot of credit to the Moeller secondary because he just could not find a soul. Here's the first punt in the game for Nick Zaites, a young man averaging about 39 yards a boot. Comes over toward the near sideline off the side of his foot a little bit, and it goes out of bounds around the 40-yard line, I believe. The 40 of Moeller, Cincinnati will have the ball, first and 10 on their own 40-yard line. 37-yard effort that time by Nick Zaites. Well, Pat, this is the second time that McKinley has given Moeller the ball on the 40-yard line, back-to-back -back drives now. This Moeller football team is too good. And there you see they're playing for their third consecutive state title. And I think, what, Pat, five out, or six out of the last seven Absolutely. state titles. 
You got it, Mr. Logan. You cannot give Moeller great field position all day. Play fake, Wilging. Scrambling to the near side. Oh, look out. Wilking is crunched by number 82, Nick Faulkner, after he got about two or three yards. And the unfortunate thing about it, Wilking was already out of bounds. Very fortunate they didn't have a personal foul called there. There's no reason that you need that kind of action in a football game. And I'm sure Terry Forbes is telling his team, you know, let's not have any stupid errors. There you see Mike Wilking completions this year. Only three touchdowns, Pat. They have not had to pass the ball much, and you can see out of the 122 attempts, 10 have gone to other people. One of those winning touchdown, or those uh, touchdown passes, though, was the winner against Princeton with only 10 seconds to go in the game. This time, Kevin Arthur carries, and Arthur is nailed behind the line of scrimmage by Kevin Keith. Well, Kevin Arthur, number 13, in the ball game. He was in there for Hiawatha Francisco. Now Francisco checks back into the ball game. Arthur, the number two tailback. And watch number 54, Kevin Keith, come up and put a McKinley hello <laughs> on the tailback. And here's another big play for Moore. Third down and eight. They need to cross midfield for the first down. Third and eight on their own, 42. Midway through quarter number two. Wilging toward the sideline. Good pass to Mahan. He gets out of bounds. He's got a first down inside the 45 of McKinley. Faulkner there to push him out, but that pass right on the money. Well, I think Mahan found himself a little bit wider open than he thought he would. Give a lot of credit to Wilging because he just shoots a rocket. Now, if Scott Mahan does some thinking here. He can get about five extra yards, but he just kind of bails out and goes for the sidelines. And then he tried to get back in after he figured, hey, <laughs> no Bulldogs around me. <laughs> now, first down, now they've crossed midfield. Again, field position so important in this ball game. In the second quarter, Moeller's had the field position. Moeller has been the number one team in the state virtually all season. Number 43, Hiawatha Francisco carrying. Francisco last week gained 90 yards against Upper Arlington. Robbie Dine made the tackle for McKinley. Francisco this season has gained over 1,000, as you can see, and 16 touchdowns. Pat, he was a starter as a sophomore for this Moeller football team. He's only a junior. The other running back back there with him, Springmeyer, is also a junior. Wilging is a senior, so they should be pretty much intact coming back for 1982. Wilging now, two out of five passing. He's going to air one out to the near side. Picked off on the play. Garland Rivers. Garland Rivers needs one block. 30, 20, 15. Rivers inside the 10-yard line. That no flags down on the field. It's going to count. McKinley's going to have the ball. Garland Rivers, number 37, has his fourth interception of the year. And he did it with one shoe. Garland <laughs> Rivers, number 37, loses his shoe as he was at almost tackled. What an incredible interception. Wilking actually, Pat, threw a very good pass. Garland Rivers gambled a little bit. You can see he one hands it. Now watch him take off here. One shoe and all. He loses his shoe there at the 40. And he forms up and gets some pretty good blocking. Number 43, Hiawatha Francisco. Back to live action, Sid Lewis, touchdown! Sid Lewis, he got some great blocking and scores from six yards out, and it's 13-0 Canton McKinley. Well, Pat, that's the second turnover, the interception by Moeller, the second takeaway for the Bulldogs, and they've scored on each occasion. We mentioned that they were a big play team, and you can certainly see right there that they're taking advantage of the errors made by Moeller on both turnovers, converting them for touchdowns. Sid Lewis has them both. Nick Zaides on the extra point kick. The kick is up. The kick is no good. So Zaides, the young man who came in, having missed only three extra points and had not missed any of his four field goals, has already missed a field goal and now has also blown an extra point. But Pat, still, it's 13-0 McKinley over Moeller, Jeff. Pat, you addressed the point at the onset of the football game that the kicking game might become very important. Missed extra point. How many times in football games, Pat, does it come down to, my gosh, I wish I had that one point back again. There you see Zaites on the sidelines, number 13. Jeff. A very good kicker. But, Pat, he was kicking right into that stiff wind gusting now up to probably 20 miles an hour. 
a soccer style kicker and just could not get the ball through the uprights. How about the Chicago Bears against Dallas on oh. Thanksgiving? That kind of hurt them a little bit, didn't it? What a great example. <laughs> uh, could have been one of the biggest upsets in the NFL. The Bears, who have been pitiful all year, coming up against the very talented Dallas Cowboys and losing that football game 10-9 to on Turkey Day. We'd like to take this opportunity to say hello to all of our viewers in the All-American Cable System. We're watching today on Channel 4, those in Coaxial on Channel 16, and those with KBLE Cable on Channel 11. And we hope you're enjoying Cube's coverage of today's game, and we're very, very happy to be bringing it to you. This is Pat Hughes along with Jeff Logan, and it's 13-0 Canton McKinley leading Cincinnati Moeller with five minutes and 12 seconds to play until halftime. Number four, Brown on the return. Finally, after he gets to the 35, is hit by Ron Cheeks, number 51. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that McKinley defense. Uh, takeaways this year, they've recovered now 18 fumbles, and they have taken 26 interceptions. The one there going back for the uh, setting up Lewis's six-yard touchdown run, and the kick, of course, failed. McKinley leads it with 4.55 to go in the second quarter, 13 to nothing, and the shocker is on. First and 10, 34-yard line. Francisco kicks it outside very nicely. And there's a penalty marker down on the play. Pat, great job by the official. He called that very late, but Springmeyer, number 33, came up and tackled one of the McKinley linebackers. Looked like a great block until I saw him tackle him. <laughs> and the official, the back judge, did a perfect job of throwing the flag. And again, Moeller is going to be nullifying, or they're going to nullify that six-yard gain by Hiawatha Francisco on the holding call. Now that's their second major penalty today, holding against Moeller. Springmeyer, the fullback, laid a perfect tackle on the inside linebackers for McKinley, but he got caught. <laughs> almost happened to uh, Mark Fister last week, didn't it? Not almost, it did happen. Mark <laughs> Fister got tackled more on defense than he did on, on offense. You tell it like it is, Jeff. I'm I'll not gonna you. pull any punches. Here we go. <laughs> All right, it makes it a first down and over 20, first and about 22. Wilging up the left sideline, incomplete. So right now, this McKinley defense, Jeff, it's very quick. They're putting a good pass rush on, and the receivers are not really getting wide open. Sometimes they'll get a little bit of an opening, but that's a quick secondary for Canton McKinley. It really is. What Moeller seems to be doing passing-wise, they're trying to work the 10-yard down and outs. That's where they seem to be most successful. But the last time they went that way, interception by Garland Rivers. Hiawatha Francisco, Garland Rivers, who made the 58-yard interception and return a couple of moments ago, along with Victor Parks and Kevin Keith in on the tackle. It's going to be third down now, third down and 18. 45-game winning streak. It's on the line right here, and it's in jeopardy right now. They trail 13-0 with less than four minutes to play in the first half. Pat, don't count this Moeller football team out. They are just too good. They have not gotten started offensively. They only had 13 yards of total offense in the first quarter, which is almost unbelievable. But this McKinley defense is just as unbelievable. Wilging back. He runs out of time, and Walt Dotson sacks him. Now I'm beginning to understand how McKinley had eight shutouts this year. <laughs> How can you have only give up 2.7 points per game? Well, this is going to be a, a perfect picture of it. If Picasso wanted to paint the picture of a great defense, he'd do it right here. Watch Dotson, number 36. And right there, quarterback Mike Wilking thinks it's not so great to drive a Dotson. <laughs> Ken Harper. <laughs> Did you really say that? Harper booms one downfield. Uh, Rankin on the return. Rankin is stopped at the 35. Jeff, you know, I noticed one thing on that replay. The nose guard, Stan Jackson, did not even rush. He dropped back in, almost like a linebacker dropping back in pass coverage. Well, the reason they did that, Pat, is that they were maybe expecting a screen play, and Jackson can also play as a linebacker. There you see the McKinley fans been behind this Bulldog team all year, and they are certainly getting their money's worth today as, Bulldogs, as the Bulldogs lead at 13-0, Great field position at the 35 with 2.35 to go, first half. And I don't think they're the kind of team that'll sit on that lead. 
This is Bernard Torrance. Torrance on the draw play, a play which has been very productive today for Canton McKinley. Now that's the first time, I think, Pat, that Torrance has carried the ball all day. He's been used as a blocking back. There you see his stats, only 624 yards this year. I say only. Every time he carries the ball, averaging 4.6, he has five TDs. He's 5'8", 185 pounds. Saw him before the game. Looks like he weighs about 230. I mean, he is just big and solid. Is he as big as a Dotson? <laughs> <laughs> it's second down and five. Number 24, Sid Lewis, the carry. Mark Whaler that time on the stop. So it's third down now. Less than two minutes to play in the half, and it looks, Jeff, like McKinley might just be sitting on the ball here and just uh, let the clock run out. They have the 13-point lead, and they'll take that to the dressing room with them at halftime. I think one thing they're going to try and do here, th uh, third down, about four to go, Pat. They have got to pick up the first down. They do not want to give Moeller another shot to get in the end zone. I would not be surprised to see him them, them come out and pass in this situation. Moeller only has three defensive backs in the game. I'm a little surprised they haven't called a timeout yet. There's 1.15 to play in the half now. We're still, it's going to be sacked. Mark Whaler, number 36 on the sack that time. A good rush, good pass rush. And now Moeller will get the ball back. As we have one minute and 11 seconds to play in the first half. Now we got a holding penalty, which is declined because Moeller wants that football. Well, if they take the penalty, they're going to give McKinley another chance at it. And certainly with just a minute and 11 to go, they're going to want to get the ball as quickly as possible. Wurzel, this play smells from the very beginning. He never really had an opportunity to get the ball unloaded. And Zaitis, Zaitis is into kick. Zaitis gets good height on the kick, not a whole lot of distance. Number four, Rob Brown on the return or the catch, fair catch. Only a 27-yard punt, and it's on the 42-yard line of Cincinnati Moeller. And we have exactly one minute to play in the first half. Surprisingly, McKinley leads 13 low. Be interesting to see what Wilgin comes out and does at this point. I think Ted Bacigalupo, the head coach of Moeller, has got to try and put some points on the board. But if he does so, I think he'll use pretty safe pass routes. He does not want to give McKinley a chance to return an interception for a score. Wilging out towards Williford. Steve Williford double covered by Fritz Montgomery and Garland Rivers. Rivers plays a little basketball here at McKinley. I bet he's good on a fast break, Jeff. He can fly. No, he is a good football player. We saw him catch a couple of passes last week, become very effective in the running game. There's head coach Ted Bacigalupo on the sidelines in his first year. Of course, he replaced the incredible Jerry Faust, who struggled up at Notre Dame this year, ending at 5-6, and six, the first losing season in many, many years for Notre Dame. But certainly they'll come back. Jerry Faust has built a great program here at, at Moeller, and Bacigalupo seems to have followed it up. Wilging, two out of seven passing, puts another one in the air. Incomplete, far short of Williford, or far too long for... Bob Hill is tight end. I'm not sure who it was to, Jeff. Well, I think he just unloaded it. Did not have the strong arm to get it to where the receiver was. Garland Rivers, again, back there in the zone coverage. Had that ball been thrown a little bit further, it would not have gone to a Crusader. It would have gone to Garland Rivers, making his second interception of the day. Keep an eye on Stan Jackson, the middle guard now. He drops out into a middle linebacker position, Pat. Third and 10. Less than 45 seconds to play in the half. A whistling pass incomplete on the near side to Scott Mahan. He dove. Our vision was partially obscured. Let's watch it again on the replay, Jeff. Remember, in high school football, you need to have one foot in bounds to make it a completion. It's an out cut to Mahan. And when he does catch the ball, his feet had left the ground and could not hang on. Pat back deep are Ross Rankin and Fritz Montgomery for McKinley. Kenny Harper ready to punt. Booms one away. This is going to be Rankin on the 25. Young man showed a lot of courage that time, just fielding that football <laughs> instead of calling for the fair catch. On the 26-yard line, first and 10 McKinley. I'd like to remind our Cube viewers in Columbus that you can enjoy a replay of this game tonight at 11 o'clock and also tomorrow at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. right here on Cube T1. 33-yard punt, 35 seconds to go, first half. 13-0, McKinley 
on the strength of two touchdowns by Sid Lewis leading in the game. And now they're just going to run out the clock in the first half. So certainly, Jeff, a very good first half for McKinley and a very bad one for Cincinnati Moeller. The Bulldogs and the Crusaders heading off the field. That's the end of the first half of play. At the end of 24 minutes of football, the scoreboard shows Kenton McKinley, 13, Cincinnati Moeller, nothing. We'll be back to take a look at the bands, some halftime statistics, and a lot more in just a moment. Halftime here at the Akron Rubber Bowl, 13-0. Kenton McKinley leading Cincinnati Moeller here in the first half. Remember, Moeller with a 45-game winning streak. Right now for your halftime entertainment, the Moeller High School Marching Band under the direction of band director Rick Hagee.
Moeller High School Marching Band. And now let's join the Canton McKinley Marching 100 under the direction of band director Michael Ward.
Canton McKinley Marching Band. We'd like to remind you at halftime, the scoreboard shows Canton McKinley 13, Cincinnati Molar nothing. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back live. Down on the field at the Akron Rubber Bowl, I'm standing on the McKinley sidelines. You wouldn't believe the sea of red and black here in favor of the McKinley Bulldogs. Right now, they're playing football good enough to be the state champions, AAA in the state of Ohio. Cincinnati Moeller has got to come back in the football game, be mistake-free, get the offense a little bit more wide open because this McKinley defense is as stingy as they've been all year. Let's go back to Pat Hughes for the remainder of halftime stats. Thanks very much, Jeff. The scoring in the first half went this way. In the first quarter, 6.35 to play in the game, in the uh, first quarter, Sid Lewis scored on an 11-yard touchdown scamper. It came on a draw play. That made it 7-0. Nick Zaitis kicked, kicked the uh, extra point. Right now, let's take a look at a replay of that touchdown from the end zone camera. The draw play, Sid Lewis, the state champion in the 100-meter dash last spring, on the draw, a huge hole opened up by that offensive line, and he just kind of danced all the way into the end zone, and it was 7-0 midway through quarter number one. Then in the second quarter, in the secondary, a great interception by Garland Rivers. He picked it off in the flat near midfield, rambled 58 yards down to the six-yard line of Moeller. At that point, another draw play and another touchdown for Sid Lewis from six yards out. That made it 13-0. Zaitis missed that extra point. And that could turn out to be a very big play later on in today's game. Now, let's take a look at some, I believe we have some team statistics to take a look at. And here they go. First downs in the first half. McKinley had five. Moeller had three. But I think they had none in the first quarter. And that's correct. And you can see that the total yards dominating is McKinley, 101 to 56. They've also had the ball four more minutes than have the Moeller Crusaders. Let's see what else we got here to take a look at. Offensive plays. Now, this is a key stat in the first half, 25 to 18 in favor of McKinley. And remember, McKinley has that great defense. And so if their offense is able to control the ball the way they were in the first half, this could be a long game for Cincinnati Moeller because McKinley's defense is just tougher than nails. They have shut out eight opponents this year, allowing less than three points per game. And we can look at some of the signs here in the Akron Rubber Bowl. Glad to have you with us. This is Pat Hughes along with Jeff Logan live from Akron, the State Division I Ohio High School Championship game. Moeller trying to become the champions for the third year in a row. Canton McKinley right now, they have other thoughts in mind. They would like to win their first state championship since 1956. All right, we're just about set for play in the second half. McKinley not only leading, but they will receive the opening kickoff here in half number two. And Jeff Logan is upstairs. It's a long trip, so I won't ask him a question here for a moment or two, although I know he is in such great shape, plays racquetball all the time. I'm supposed to be working all the time. You're not supposed to tell everybody <laughs> that. <laughs> all righty. Like the... Let me just tell you, it's amazing. I was down on the field that time, and, and uh, when I mentioned that there's a sea of red and black, it is very boisterous. It's amazing. Uh, the momentum in this football game that I'm sure you've probably already talked about is just incredible at this point because McKinley not only has the fans behind him 100%, they have the more fans here. We talked about maybe a home team advantage. Definitely. Uh, Moeller's fans are just dumbfounded at this point. Here's the opening kickoff, second half of play. Fritz Montgomery from his own five-yard line sprints out, shows great balance, and gets back to the 20. 21-yard line, first and 10. Tackle made that time by Pat Apke on the special team. First and 10 for Kenton McKinley. A replay, Jeff. Well, it certainly looked like he had almost dropped his knee down here. You'll see him when he cuts to the right. It appeared that he was down. The official was right on the play. Let's watch here. 
Yeah, he got right back up. Great balance, as you mentioned, Pat. McKinley's got the, the ball on the 21-yard line. Not bad field position to start a drive. Rick, we're still a quarterback. Three out of five, 34 yards passing in that first half of play. Sid Lewis off left guard. Whaler, the linebacker, made the tackle, as did Mike Harmeyer. We're still, we mentioned, Jeff, three out of five, 34 yards. I believe he had all of that, all of that yardage in that first drive of 67 yards. You're right, Pat. Uh, there you see one of the McKinley cheerleaders on the sidelines with their mascot, the Bulldog. Other individual stats, first half, Sid Lewis, 53 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Second down and eight from the 22. We're still a great scrambler. He's going to tuck it under and run, but he doesn't get very far. Back to the 25, a gain of about two yards. It'll set up third and six. I Tackle that time by Don Duckworth, Jeff. Pat, I think we're still at that play. That, that play made the wrong decision as far as deciding to scramble or throw the ball. You know, he was the indecision there. If he had just decided to take off and run for it, he's got the first down easy. You're going to see straight drop back. He a little bit of a play fake to Sid Lewis, 24. But right now, Worstel should be looking for the run. He's got a blocker out in front of him. He's got a lot of room. He should have just taken off for the first down, third and seven. He's going to pass now. Out to the flat to Lewis, has to come back to make the catch, and then starts back up, but gets only to the line of scrimmage. Kevin Fitzpatrick, number 67, made the tackle, and so Moeller, very tough on defense in this first series in the second half, and coming on to punt is Nick Zaides of Canton McKinley. Pat, how'd the script Ohio look from up here? It looked very good. Both bands performed very well. I think uh, Muller must have done a little recruiting for those flag <laughs> girls because, of course, they're an all-male school. Fumble on the punt. Recovered by McKinley on the 49-yard line of Moeller. Well, Pat, I mentioned on the sidelines that for Moeller to win this football game and make a big comeback, that they were going to have to go out in the second half and play mistake free football. Now the first opportunity that they have to control the football, they make a turnover. You're going to see the punt fielded by number four, Rob Brown, and he just does not do a very good job at catching the football, took his eyes off of it, and the McKinley Bulldogs have the first big break in the after, er, of the second half, ball on the 48. Three turnovers in the ball game, all against Moeller. Walt Dotson recovered the fumble, big turnover, first and 10. We're still, let's see if they try to hit him with a deep one. No, a sack on the play. Getting in for Moeller to sack were still were number 99, Ron Davis, and number 60, Regal Summers. Pat, I think a perfect play call here for McKinley, especially with this hard rush, might be a quarterback draw, much like Michigan uses with Steve Smith, their quarterback. You can see the holes that are available, but again, Rick Worstell just waits too long. Give a lot of credit to that Moeller secondary because the reason he has to stand back there that long is because they're, they're, they're very well covered downfield. At least Worstel is not throwing into a crowd and causing an interception. Second and 14, Pat. From their own 47-yard line, Worstel to pass again. Good touch. Behind Lewis, though. Guarding him on that play was the linebacker, Apke. And, of course, you love, Jeff, when you have a fast running back to get one-on-one -on -one coverage with the linebacker, and that's what they had that time. Pat, that's a real dream. Any Anytime you can get a linebacker one-on-one, -on -one, especially if you're a Sid Lewis who can run at 10, 600 meters, you got to love that. I mean, that is incredible. I, I can remember playing at Ohio State, even though we didn't throw much to the backs out of the backfield. When you did come out, it was very nice to see one of those big lumbering linebackers trying to run you down because you knew you could just flat-out beat him or better, or you're not going to be playing next week. <laughs> Lewis did have two catches in the first half. Draw play. Torrance. Torrance fighting, and he only gets a yard. Moeller read that play very well. Apke, Plummer, and Harmeyer on the tackle. It's fourth down. So Moeller has been very impressive on two defensive situations here in the second half. That was an interesting vantage point that our cameraman picked up. I've never seen the game watched by the, in, the, in the trees like that. Zaidi's punt will land on the 30 and gets a good McKinley bounce inside the 20. Finally picked up on the play, and then he wishes he hadn't. Rob Brown picked it up and tried to scamper, and he was nailed. Pat, I was just going to say that Rob Brown made a great play by picking that ball up because the McKinley uh, punt coverage team had decided they were going to let it roll and then down it. Watch Rob Brown here. He catches five or six of the Bulldogs just waiting, but what a great effort for McKinley by number 21. Terrell Clifford 
on the special teams coming up and knocking Rob Brown, his pins right out from underneath him, and Moeller again starts in ugly field position at the 15. First and 10, let's see what Moeller can do now. Mike Wilging, the quarterback, was only two out of 10 in that first half. And it's a running play to get things started here for Moeller. As Jeff mentioned, they're having trouble with field position. Steve Williford, the ball carrier, and Stan Jackson made the tackle. I don't know if we can get another look at that. It may be a couple plays from now, but that time, Stan Jackson, watch how he blows the center out. He blows the center back into the backfield. Stan Jackson's the one that screwed that play up because he knocked the center, Mark Goetzke, right back into the backfield. Looked like four running backs as soon as the play started. <laughs> Jackson definitely an all-state candidate. Wilging, good pass right on the numbers to Dave Niehaus. He's got a first down to the 30-yard line. Make it the 29. Now that pass was whistled right in there, Jeff. Patty was wide open over there too, but did you notice how many red shirts showed up right after he caught the ball? Yep. I counted five or six. Just runs a little curl in pattern about 15 yards down the field, enough for the first down. Niehaus is wide open. Now watch the red shirts come like crazy. There's one, two, three, four, almost seven red shirts able to make the tackle. Great pursuit by McKinley. First and 10 on the 29. Up the middle, Springmeyer. Dave Springmeyer did not play against Upper Arlington because of an injury. Gained over 500 yards this year and scored four touchdowns for Moeller. This time, about a four yard gain to the 33. That it might have appeared there that the right guard for Moeller, number 70, Tim Odom, uh, was off sides. He's just so much quicker than the other football players on that line that it appears that he always goes off sides every play, but he's the one that's on the count. He's 6'3", 233, and Bacigalupo says he might be the best lineman in Moeller history, which is saying something. On the 33-yard line, Williford in motion. Springmeyer again. Springmeyer short of a first down to the 37-yard line. It'll bring up third and two. Dine and Dotson on the tackle that time. If you're just joining us, that's the story. Third quarter, just under six minutes to play. Canton McKinley 13, Cincinnati Moeller nothing from the Akron Rubber Bowl. Glad to have you with us live on Cube. That you know it's warmed up a little bit from when we did the pregame. The wind is not as blowing as much as it, it was at the start of the game. And I think on this side of the field at least it's warm because the red and black of McKinley is pumped up and they got the uh, adrenaline flowing. Third and two. Francisco has the first down. Hiawatha Francisco, running back par excellence for Cincinnati Moeller, gets across the 40 for a first and 10. Moeller putting together two first downs for, I believe, the first time in the game. They might have done it once in the second quarter, but that time Francisco, after he was tackled by Dine and Rivers, has the first down yardage. Pat, did you notice how wide open that sweep looked when it first developed and then how quickly it closed up? The McKinley Bulldogs, that pursuit is very impressive as they shut down uh, what could have been a bit much, uh, much longer gain. On first down, Francisco, only a yard or two. Number 69, Robbie Dine. And number 30, Stan Jackson. Those two guys have been in on a lot of tackles uh -oh. as Francisco gets up. Very good football players. Uh, very important to the success of this McKinley defense. There you see the coaching staff of McKinley working the sidelines. Their head coach, Terry Forbes, 19 and two since he's been at McKinley. He brought two other high school programs around, around one Black River Forest uh, was the name of the school. Brought them from an 0 and 10 season to seven and three. Francisco tackled in the backfield. Number 85, Ricky Hall. That's about as well as you can make the play from an outside linebacking spot, Jeff. Good pursuit again. You're going to see number 43, Hiawatha Francisco, on the student body left. And the man that really made the play, Ricky Hall, fought off the block by Bob Hill and just obliterated uh, Hiawatha Francisco. Ricky Hall, great football player. Pat, one thing of note, McKinley has not been penalized all day. They're playing mistake-free football. That time Hall tackled both Hill and Francisco. Wilging, incomplete, it was deflected. Off the hands of Dave Niehaus, it was Victor Parks, number 48, who got a hand on it, and it's gonna be fourth down, and listen to this crowd backing Kenton McKinley. Well, there's about 12,000 McKinley fans down in front of us, and they're giving standing ovation to their defense. 
Well, Pat, I've not seen a high school football uh, team play defense as well as I have seen McKinley, and we've seen some good ones, most notably Upper Arlington. Ken Harper gets the punt away, a good high hanger. And a great defensive play on the special team. Montgomery, the man who took the ball, and it was Steve Apke, number 58, who got down to make the tackle. 41-yard punt. First and 10, Kenton McKinley. McKinley leading 13-0. Third quarter, which has three and a half minutes of life remaining. I'd like to thank our help up in the booth here today. Dave Shottlecotty, our great floor manager, and Andy Logan spotting, and Dan Hawk, a man who recently won the Elton John Lookalike Contest. <laughs> Here's a running play, Sid Lewis. Lewis out across the 20. Sid has that great burst of speed, Jeff. That uh, look-alike contest, that didn't have anything to do with him playing pinball last night up here in Akron, did it? <laughs> he what knocked him dead, I'll tell you. There you go. Sid Lewis, 203 yards last week against Cleveland St. Joe, who again, Pat, was a much bigger team than McKinley, but they just seemed to out-quick him. And the most important thing in this part of the game, they have no turnovers and they have no penalties. They're just playing excellent, mistake-free football. Lewis, look out, Apke. Pat Apke, number 41. The inside linebacker stayed at home that time, and he was ready to bury his helmet into the ribs of Sid Lewis. Well, 41, Pat Apke, that name, name may sound familiar. His brother plays for the Buckeyes, Joe Apke, from this same Cincinnati molar. And Pat makes a perfect, fundamental tackle. Put your head in the middle, grab the legs, and drive him. He's only 6'2", 181 pounds, but he hits like a much bigger football player. His brother Steve is the one that just made the tackle on the punt return. Still third and six. Lewis with 59 yards rushing in the game. We're still, interception by Apke. A penalty marker is down. Apke is tackled on the 30-yard line. First takeaway of the day for Cincinnati Moeller. Now, let's see what the penalty's all about. There are actually two markers down, one on the 22-yard line on the far side and one right in the defensive backfield at the 35. Well, the Moeller fans are cheering. The officials are talking about it, and they talk with Captain Ron Davis. There's Apke, who we just talked about on the big tackle, makes the intercept. Illegal procedure against McKinley declined, and clipping. Well, we're going to get the other penalty here. Watch quarterback Rick Wurtstell sets up a pass that he never should have thrown. I don't think he ever saw Apke. He was blocked out. Looked like Apke was the intended receiver for Moeller Crusaders. The clip was against Moeller. You saw it at the top of the screen. They will assess the kickoff, or excuse me, they will assess the penalty uh, on Moeller after giving him the ball because it occurred after the interception, Pat. So Moeller will now take the ball first down at the 50-yard line. First and 10, they need to get to the 40 for the first down. So the penalty really is very costly as they don't have that great a field position, but now Francisco gets down to the 42. That's a gain of eight yards for Hiawatha Francisco. Third quarter, winding down, just over a minute 20 to play in the third. Jeff? Well, watch uh, Wilging here, the quick pitch to Francisco, the same play we saw in their last drive. And this time, the offensive line of Moeller gets out and does a good job, led by 6'5", 215-pound Cliff Brooks. And Garland Rivers, number 37, comes up and makes a hit on that man right there. Number 43, Hiawatha Francisco. And we have two McKinley football players injured on the field. Jeff, what a job the uh, McKinley defense did against Moeller in that first half because Francisco had only 21 yards on eight carries. Klaus had 18 on three carries. I think Kevin Keith is the injured player right now for the Bulldogs. He's not the oh, only McKinley. injured player too, Pat. You see number 48, Victor Parks, in the right yep. part of your screen. That time, that big offensive line of Cincinnati Moeller took its toll. You can't keep Kevin Keith down. Look at him. You think he's ready to play some football? He comes back over. He'll come out for one play, and he'll go right back into the ball game, I'm sure. Oh, big... Big yardage picked up that time by Cincinnati Moore. You know, Francisco reminds me a little bit of, of Cal Murray, who played for Ohio State last year. Pat, I know you weren't in Columbus, but those people that are in Columbus might be able to make that assessment along with me. Where's the same number as Cal Murray? He's the slashing, uh, a running back style, 6'1", 183-pounder, and runs about the same same type of uh, 
uh, of way that Cal Murray does. Here's kind of a free down now for Moeller. Second and two. They can mess around a little bit if they want. Springmeyer gets the first down across the 40. But Jeff, that second and two, second and one, as an offensive team, you love that situation. I'm really surprised Moeller didn't take advantage of it more. With second down and two to go, that's a perfect time to, to use a, a screen pass or or use a, uh, a long pass of some sorts. You know, it really is, Pat, what you call it, a free down. There you see Bacigalupo sending the play in. And you hear the chance by the McKinley fans for defense, defense. They're going to have to come up with a big play. 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Pat. The Molar Express beginning to roll a little bit here on the 39-yard line of Canton McKinley. Wilging to the left side. Great catch by Niehaus. A diving, spearing catch by Dave Niehaus. Dave makes his 14th catch of the season. Last week he had one catch for 21 yards. We're down to 28 seconds to play. Third quarter. That play good enough for a first down. A gain of 12 yards. Niehaus runs a perfect route here. He's just a square out pattern. And the thing he does best is he gets his depth, which, I'm, which I mean by he gets the first down distance. You can see there he just gets it by two or three yards. A lot of young receivers will cut that pattern off a little bit short and end up with second and nine. That's a good point, Jeff. First and 10 now inside the 30. Francisco, he lined up in the slot that time as a wing, I believe, and he gets to the 25, a play that looked like it might get some good yardage, gets only about three because there's that pursuit that you talked about again. Walt Dotson made the tackle. Dotson, along with Victor Parks, did a good job at coming from their middle areas and getting out there on the pursuit. Clock counting down two, one, and that's going to be it for the third quarter, Pat. At the end of three, neither team scoring in that third quarter, and the score remains. The Kenton McKinley Bulldogs, 13. The Cincinnati Molar Fighting Crusaders, nothing. We'll be back for the fourth and final quarter in just one moment. Jeff Moeller trailed Princeton of Cincinnati 17-7 with four minutes to play, and they won the football game. They trail right now by 13 with a quarter to play. Well, they've got it. They have got to score on this drive here, Pat. This is the best field position they've had as far as offensively driving into McKinley territory. I think in the entire ball game, they have to take advantage right now. They've got second and seven. Then they've got to come back and play great defense, which they have not done yet. In motion, Francisco, but this is Springmeyer. A great defensive play by little Fritz Montgomery. Montgomery, number 14, is only 5'9", 157 pounds. Pat, the one thing this McKinley team does, does better than any defense I've seen all year is just pursue, pursue, pursue. Most teams would have given up on this play right about here. But McKinley doesn't. Number 14, Fritz Montgomery comes up from his cornerback position, makes a perfect tackle, drops his head right into the legs of Springmeyer, the much bigger running back, a 200-pounder. Third and six on the 24. Mike Wilging back. A fine catch by Francisco, short of a first down. It was Stan Jackson, the nose guard, who dropped back in pass defense that time to make a tremendous defensive play. It's fourth down, Jeff. Watch here, Hiawatha Francisco. Delays coming out of the backfield. You can see him looking there, but look who's looking at him right in the eyes. It's Stan <laughs> Jackson came right out of his middle guard position and said, Hiawatha, I've got a delivery for you. And he delivers it right on the left side. And Moeller has called a timeout. This has got to be the biggest play call that Ted Bacigalupo has ever made, I would imagine, all this year. Give you the story. 10 minutes, 54 seconds to go in the ball game. State championships, AAA, Division I. McKinley leads at 13-0, and Moeller's got a problem. They've got fourth down and about five yards to go for the first down, and if they try to field goal from here, Pat, it'd be 40 yards into the wind. Can't happen. They've got to go. For, for, uh, for the first down. Because then they'd still have to score twice after, even if they made the field goal. They're down 13-0 right now. Mike Wilging, the senior quarterback, led them to the state championship a year ago. He's a good running quarterback. He's passed for three touchdowns this year, but he has suffered 10 interceptions. And his 11th earlier today, a great interception by Garland Rivers. Well, I, you might watch for him to come out of the backfield again to Hiawatha Francisco, Pat. We saw him flood the zone last week against Arlington. Mm -hmm. There he comes, Hiawatha Francisco. Three wide receivers to the left. Watch him pass to the open part of the field. Wilging. 
Deflected, incomplete. I think it was Stan Jackson who got his hand on the football. McKinley takes over. Well, that's one football player, Pat, that we didn't hype for too much coming into the ball game. We told you a lot about Stan Jackson, but he's every bit of that and more. Number 30, Stan Jackson, six foot, 177 pound senior. Great quickness. He had 15 quarterback sacks coming into the ball game, and he makes the play of his career right there. 10 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the ball game. McKinley's got the ball on the 23. First and 10. Sid Lewis, not a whole lot there, but you can expect McKinley to keep the ball on the ground here, Jeff, and let that clock tick away. Might disagree with you just a little bit there, Pat. I would imagine McKinley still have to, has to be aggressive. There's a lot of time left in this ball game, and the worst thing they could do now is get conservative. That has not been their play call the entire game. They've got to keep the momentum up, be as aggressive as they can, and I think you'll see right here that you're going to see the quarterback, Wurzel, drop back to pass again. Wurstel, the quarterback, does a good job of scrambling, dropping back to pass. If it's not open, let him run for it. We're still a great scrambler. This is Lewis. He's got a couple of blockers. He gets away from a tackle by Apke, but then number 86, Mike Coyne, pulled him down. He did stay inbounds, however, and that's important because the clock continues to run. It'll be third down and five. Remember that this Moeller football team has only two of their timeouts remaining. They wasted one, or had to take one, I should say, uh, on their fourth down and five play. There you see the clock, 9.45 to go. And, of course, McKinley is on the left there as the, as, as the home team, the Akron Zips, as they appear. 13-0 over Moeller. Third and five. Wurstel's going to pass. If he can get away, he can't. It was Mark Whaler who really got in there and put the pressure on him. There he is, number 36. Great quickness by the junior linebacker, 200-pounder, six feet tall. You're going to see him. He'll come out of the left side of your screen from his outside linebacker's position and really just delivers a blow. Back to live action, a beautiful punt by Nick Zaitis. Great coverage. Number 60, Claude Brown, got down to make the tackle on Rob Brown, and it's first and 10, Moeller. 45-yard punt by Nick Zaitis, somewhat atoning for his missed extra point earlier. Good pressure that time by the Moeller defense, but what Zaitis did, he got the ball up in the air. Number 12, Ross Rankin limping off the field. He's got cramps, Pat. His calves are cramped up, and they'll work on him on the sidelines. That is not serious. Williging. Incomplete. Number 88, Scott Mahan, made a diving effort, and he might be a little shaken up right now. Oh, what Mahan a, is grabbing his left foot there. What a try. Huh, oh, Jeff? it really was. And I thought he caught in the ball, Pat. I thought it was right in the, right in the pocket. You're going to see number 16, Wilging, set up. He's going to number 88, Scott Mahan. Take a look at it right here. Coverage by the McKinley linebackers and a great call by the official. It indeed was trapped. Boy, they do not make many mistakes. Officials for the state of Ohio doing a great job. Mahan injured on the sidelines. Oh, I think in this situation, McKinley is doing an interesting thing on the field. They, they got their defense huddled together and they were going through some quickness drills that might be a, a trademark of McKinley. I've never seen them do it. I the, fans, do it the fans loved it. Oh, they're just trying to keep the momentum up, trying to get excited. Here they go again at midfield. Oh, and the fans love it. You can see it there, the tail end of it. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of our viewers in the All-American Cable TV system on Channel 24, those in the coaxial cable TV system on Channel 16, and those with KBLE on Channel 11. Glad to have you with us. Second and 10, Wilging. and Ricky Hall. Well, Dotson and Hall, Pat, numbers 36 and 85, respectively. They play the defensive end positions. You're going to see him coming out of the right and the left part of your screen. And Wilking just runs out of friends. <laughs> and the McKinley Bulldogs get him again. That's probably four or five times that Wilking has been sacked today. And he's had pressure in his face all the times that he's gone back to pass. 
third down in about 16. Three wide receivers to the near side. Wilging. I don't know if he can scramble for it. Stan Jackson. Holy Toledo, what a play. Well, it looked like he was sacked. Wilking as he was trying to pass it first, but a great play by offensive tackle John Askins knocked Ricky Hall out of his quarterback's face. But again, Wilking runs out of friends as he scrambles out of the pocket. Watch the great play by John Askin, left part of your screen. Ricky Hall goes up in his face, ready to sack him, and Askin just drills him. Stan Jackson comes all the way from 20 yards deep to come in, fight off a blocker, sack the quarterback, and they're going to punt. Ken Harper, a low liner into the wind, a good job. It's gonna get a good molar bounce also. Less than eight minutes to play, and Kenton McKinley will have the ball again. Now, if they can grind out a couple of first downs, they could truly make life miserable for the Cincinnati Molar Crusaders. Fourth quarter, 50-yard punt that time by Kenny Harper. That is not Ted Bacigalupo on the sideline, by the way. No, he wears the white gloves, or has in the past. He may have taken them off. He may be so steamed up over there out of some of the problems that they've had. But I'll tell you what, most of the problems have come out of just great play by McKinley. Bacigalupo right now standing on the 50-yard line. First and 10 for Kenton McKinley. Draw play to Lewis. Lewis motoring to the 30. Apke made the tackle. That's a neat little trap play that McKinley runs. They bring Lewis from his split back position, bring him all the way across the line. He's at the top left of your screen. Watch the guards and the, and the tackle pull there. He gets two big linemen out in front of him. Good job that time by the McKinley offensive line. Gary Pounds, number 73, a 230-pounder. He's well-named for that weight that he carries. <laughs> Carlos Lewis. Carlos has a first down. Carlos carrying for, I believe, the first time in the game. Now, he and Sid are not related, but they can both carry that football. They're related in only one manner, Pat. They play great football. You just mentioned <laughs> it. They're both very quick. And this time, Carlos... Cuts it up inside. We're speaking of Carlos Lewis. Oh, and what a hit made by Regal Summers, number 60, at the tail end of that play. Carlos Lewis this year in limited action. Carried the ball 26 times for a 6.3 yard average and four touchdowns. First and 10, Kenton McKinley. Sid Lewis off left tackle. He gets about four yards before Apke. And also number 34, Barry Larkin combined on the stop. There's your story, just over 5.20 to play. McKinley, on the strength of two first-half touchdowns by Sid Lewis, still leading 13-0. Pat, I think one of the real reasons McKinley's dominated this entire football game is number one, no mistakes. Number two, uh, I think only one penalty against him. And number three, the wide-open offense that they're playing. If you play passive against this Mueller team, you're going to get beat. Lewis again to the near side. Keeps his footing beautifully. Short of a first down, Mike Parmeyer made the tackle. That you may find this hard to believe, but as you and I look across at the Moeller uh, fans, they are filing out of the stadium. They've given up, they're going home, and we've got a McKinley player injured. Looks like number 82, Nick Faulkner. But if we can get a look, look at that. And that's just a, a sampling of who's leaving because they are coming out and, in, and out of the stands like you won't believe. Those are all blue and gold They're going bailing. home. They are bailing out. They've got a long drive and they got a lot to talk about on the way home. Cincinnati Moeller, defending state champion, going for their third in a row and six out of the last seven state championships is going down the tubes at the Rubber Bowl by the hands of the McKinley Bulldogs. With 4.46 left in the bowl, in the game, McKinley leads at 13-0. The injured player was Nick Faulkner, and McKinley just wants something to cheer about. There's another standing ovation. Faulkner had a big catch of 82 yards against Maslin earlier this year. The coaching staff on the far sideline for Cincinnati Moeller rather 
disheartened by the turn of events that have occurred today. Just over four minutes to play. Third down and a yard to go. McKinley with the ball and the lead. We're still. Fakes it to Lewis, gives it instead to Carlos Lewis, and he has stopped behind the line of scrimmage. A great defensive play. Barry Larkin and Rob Brown. It's going to be fourth down, and they're not going to mess around. They're going to punt that football away right now. Certainly will, Pat. Great play calling, though, by Terry Forbes. He's using plays that use up a lot of time. Remember, Moeller only has two timeouts left. They have to come up with a big play. And Moeller's just jumped off sides, and McKinley's going to have the first down. You saw the McKinley punt team. They pulled one of the Dallas Cowboys shifts. Now they're calling it against McKinley, saying they were drawn off sides. Illegal procedure <laughs> against McKinley. Oh, watch here. All McKinley's doing, they're not set. They're just using the Dallas Cowboys set. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it looks great. Good job by Terry <laughs> Forbes. What was that you were saying earlier, Jeff, about the officiating? <laughs> Dick Armstrong came in here and said I wasn't allowed to say anything else about the officials. <laughs> that was a good call, I guess. Here's the punt. What a punt it is by Zaitis. That goes all the way down inside the five. How about that? Down man. on the one-yard line. Holy Toledo. Zaitis is sprinting down the field. He's the punter number 13, and he has just drilled a 150-yard pitching wedge very tight to the pin at the one-yard line. <laughs> what a great job, and the McKinley fans love it. 50-yard kick, downed on the one. And I think the fellow that downed it was number 60, Claude Brown. Watch here. Claude Brown, I think it is, number 60, just comes out of nowhere. Look at the English on that ball. I swear that looks like my pitching win. <laughs> Not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the McKinley Bulldogs. Everything they're doing is coming up roses. Wilging from his own end zone with 3.25 to play. And off to Dave Springmeyer. Not much there. Kevin Keith brought him down on about the three, maybe the four. Now they smell victory, Pat. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go in the ball game. This could be, if it ends up the way it is, it's 13-0 right now. Apparently there's a flag on the play. They're marking it off against McKinley. Looks like it's going to be a personal foul, maybe unsportsmanlike conduct. Let's see the call. Grabbing the face mask against Kent McKinley, a little bit too aggressive. Pat McKinley didn't make a penalty until the fourth quarter. That's amazing. They've only had one turnover in the entire ball game. Just a reminder tonight that our Q viewers can watch a replay of this game at 11 o'clock tonight, Saturday night, and tomorrow twice, 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wilging. Under the coverage, good move by Francisco. He's got a first down and he's out of bounds at the 28. That's a good individual effort by Hiawatha Francisco. Pat, remember this McKinley defense has shut out eight opponents all year. This time, Wilking is going to drop back. He's passing to Hiawatha Francisco, giving him a chance to do some dancing and freelancing. Francisco does the best job that he can. The most important thing he did, Pat, was get out of bounds, stops the clock with 2.51 to go in a game. Fritz Montgomery coming up from his safety position to, to make the tackle. Wilging, you can bet, is going to start passing just about every down, and he is sacked on the play. Gary Pounds got in to drill him. Number 73. number 73 who also plays offensive tackle in there just for the pass rush 230 pounder and he just flat out beats Tim Odom the molar guard and Mike Wilking gets another welcome it's second down in 19 Pat Wilking has triple wide receivers on the right lofting one up and way out of bounds Garland Rivers was covering very tightly on Steve Niehaus that time and it's third down and 19. Jeff. Hey, I mentioned this McKinley defense. They shut out eight opponents. Head coach Terry Forbes says, you know, we've actually shut out 10 because St. Ignatian scored on a block punt. Normandy, their sec they scored on the McKinley second team defense. If that's the case, they've actually shut out 11 of 13 opponents this year. This first team defense has shut out 11 of 13. They deserve to be the state champions in the state of Ohio. Third down and 19. Wilging. 
incomplete. Springmeyer, the intended receiver. We have two minutes to play. It's fourth down, and Moeller is going to punt it away. Does that surprise you a little? Well, I'm not so sure they're going to punt it away. Wouldn't be so surprised to see a fake kick, even though they've got to travel 19 yards for the first down. Then again, they might just out of pride punt it away. They'd only rather lose 13-0 instead of maybe 20 to nothing. Harper, number one, is back to punt, and he is going to punt it, Pat. He drills one. Nobody really back, although it's a shank off the side of the foot of Harper, and it rolls dead on the 47. Listen to this crowd. Ken McKinley, less than two minutes away from their first state championship since 1956. Well, Pat, they've waited 25 years, and it's been a heck of a lot of fun doing it. This McKinley football team now with 13 straight victories. Folks, you can turn out the lights because the party's over. Canton McKinley is going to be the state champs, AAA, Division I in the state of Ohio. And I think that gives them the honor, Pat, of being the best football team in the country because the best football is played right here in Ohio. Where did you play high school football, Jeff? Right here in Canton, Ohio, Pat. <laughs> this, is where the, this is where the best football is played, Northeast Ohio. I believe it after watching today's game. St. Louis fumbles. They say the play was dead. It All was dead. blown dead. Pat, we've got the McKinley assistant coaches in the press box beside us. And I'll tell you what, if one of them doesn't go out of the window here and go down the, go down into the stands, I'm going to be shocked. They are one excited group of, uh, of coaches, and they've done a great job of preparing their team. You know, Pat, one thing, Moeller, there you see the coaches, and they're invading our press box. Congratulations, coaches. There you hear it. They don't even need the stairs to go down. They'll just fly. <laughs> Second down and 10 for Kenton McKinley. That as they were leaving, they were yelling, shut out, shut out. <laughs> and they certainly have done it to the Moeller Crusaders who came into the game averaging 26 points a game. But let me just, with a minute and nine seconds, on the cover of the press guide for Cincinnati Moeller, it says we're number one in academics, we're number one in athletics. Cincinnati Moeller is a place where religion and discipline are a way of life and as you look at that Moeller football team right there, they're not losing their cool, they're not losing their class. They're champions in their own right also. Wouldn't you agree? I definitely would. Their winning streak of 45 games about to come to an end, but like you said, Jeff, there's no cheap shots. They're not hitting late. They're not, uh, you know, they're not giving up. Still playing with a lot of pride. And they punted the ball away a moment ago, like you said, sure. to preserve the loss at a respectable total. That I think they've what, won 82 out of 83, 83 games? That's right. No, when they start next season, they will have won 82 out of 84. That's tough, isn't it? <laughs> really tough. <laughs> you can see the McKinley football players on offense looking up into the stands. There has not been a red and black dressed person leave this stadium. They are here for the celebration. They're standing on top of the McKinley dugout, ready to charge the field. The officials are going to have their hands full when this thing's over with. Quarterback Worstel on third and 14. He's back to pass, believe it or not. He goes down under a strong rush. I think he was just scrambling, Pat, to use up as much of the clock as he can. 58 seconds, clock counting down. Mike Moeller not able to stop the clock. There they do it. Jeff, you know, McKinley, they've had some great players here play it uh, for the Bulldogs. Guys like Ray Ellis, who played for OSU, now plays defensive back for the Philadelphia Eagles. and. Benny Lee and Doyle Lewis. They've had some great football players. Of course, Benny Lee and Doyle Lewis now on the Ohio State team. And I don't know if Stan Jackson's big enough to play Big Ten football, but if he is, I hope he comes to Columbus. You know, Jeff, I was thinking of that earlier. He's six feet tall, 177 pounds. He's not going to play defensive line, not going to play linebacker. He might play in the secondary. What a great cornerback he would yeah. make. Coming up on run support, the McKinley fans are now invading the field. They are down on the on the bench with the team, and the officials, the Akron City Police, are doing their best to keep the people off the field. What a sight this is. Pat, I'd like to take a chance with 53 seconds to go to thank everybody that's been a part of Cube football with us through the entire season. We started in the first week of September from the camera people all the way to the technicians, all the way to the people that work with us in the booth, all very important. Uh, uh, have a very important role in making us successful as we are. And yeah. I think we're doing a great job. Heck, we love it. 
And we're going to show you their names at the end of the contest today. The punt is away by Zaides. And again, unbelievable coverage by Canton McKinley as Rob Brown took the ball and he was immediately greeted by Artis Cobb and Claude Brown. That 28 yard punt. 45, 44, clock counting down. Moeller unable to stop the clock unless by incomplete pass or by a penalty. And McKinley has seven defensive backs in the game. First down would also stop the clock, but that's not gonna be a first down. Garland Rivers laid a tattoo on Jeff Klaus. Well, Jeff Klaus came out of his halfback position and Garland Rivers just flat out stamped his ticket in the secondary. Garland old. Wilging throws it away. There's a grounding penalty. And now look at some of the fans. Oh, look out. Number 70 of Moeller, Tim Odom, went over and attacked a fan because he was kind of hassling Wilging. That's a shame, and the Akron City Police have taken the field. They're wearing black, too. They must be for Kent McKinley. Bacigalupo is giving that official an earful. He's not asking where the closest McDonald's is either, is he, Pat? No. In fact, he is frying. <laughs> There's Ted Bacigalupo there with the hat on, went down, asking the officials to restore order on the sidelines, and I think they ought to. Those McKinley fans should not be permitted past the neutral zone. And it's a shame there's only 12 seconds to play in the game. Kent McKinley is going to upset Cincinnati Molder for the 1981 Division I State Championship. At the sidelines on the McKinley sidelines looks like something after the game. You can't tell the players from the state from the fans on the field. There you see it right there. And all the coaches are actually illegal where they're standing, but they don't have any choice. There's got to be five or 6,000 fans on the sidelines alone. Wilging to Hiawatha Francisco, nowhere. The crowd spilling onto the field. It's all over. just to let you enjoy what we're seeing right here. 25 years of waiting. McKinley retains the state championship. Last time they did it was 1956. Bowler going for seven out of eight comes 13 points short, Pat. All the scoring in the first half by Sid Lewis, an 11 yard run and a six yard run. They scored on their first drive, Kenton McKinley did. And then later they scored after a 58-yard interception and return by Garland Rivers. Sid Lewis getting both touchdowns. And right now, the players beginning to mill around and congratulate each other. Moeller, losers for the first time in 46 games as they are unsuccessful in their attempt to win a third straight state title. Jeff, I'll tell you, it was a great first half, a great game. And again, we knew it was going to be a defensive battle. Right. And it was. Yeah, we mentioned in the pregame, you asked me, what did McKinley have to do to win the football game? Mentioned they had to play mistake free or very close to it. They had to take advantage of big plays. And they did just that. That doesn't make me look smart. But what I'm saying is, is that that is what an underdog team has got to do, whether it's Northwestern playing Ohio State or McKinley playing Moeller or vice versa. You know, head coach uh, Terry Forbes from McKinley came out in the Canton repository this morning, which is the daily paper in Canton, it says, we're, we're playing a great team today, but we think they're playing a great team also. And he's just been fighting that respect for the McKinley Bulldogs. He knew all along that he had a team good enough to play with these fellas, and they sure did prove it today. Give a lot of credit to Rick Wurzel, the quarterback, who did a great job. Sid Lewis, number 24 at tailback, and how about Stan Jackson? He's my most viable player in any game, the way I saw him play today. He did such a great job on defense. That entire defensive unit of McKinley might be up for all state honors. I'm not sure. They, they all deserve to be, Pat, and it's been a great football game. We're going to be right back, wrap it up here from the rubber ball. McKinley 13, Moeller nothing.
Welcome back to the Akron Rubber Bowl. Pat Hughes along with Jeff Logan on cue. Glad you could join us for this one. Kind of a surprise on the final day of the high school football season. I'm sure a lot of people throughout the state of Ohio thought that Moeller was once again going to become the kingpin in the state, but it was not to be today. In front of 25,000 people here on a very chilly late fall afternoon, Canton McKinley has come up with a great upset, a super performance, and they win the football game 13 to nothing. And Jeff, you know, it's been a crazy season. The college football season has been rather up and down. You've had teams knocking off other teams that had no business doing so. The NFL, the Browns are down this year, the Bengals are up. It's, maybe it's fitting that McKinley should upset Moeller this year. Well, the reasons that the college and the pro uh, are so balanced this year are certainly not because of uh, the same reasons for high schools. But, Pat, it is peculiar that you see it on all levels, that this would be the same year that Ohio State and Michigan would lose three games in a season, if you can believe that, that there'd be such a turnaround of events in the NFL that the Browns are going down the tubes and the Bengals are going up. <laughs> and now Cincinnati. Moeller loses, and it's really tough to say they they lose. I mean, because they just they just flat out have a great program of athletics, and there always are going to be contenders, as are these McKinley Bulldogs. But I don't think there's any question today, Pat. McKinley deserved to win the football games. One penalty, or excuse me, one turnover in the entire ball game, and only a few penalties. They did a great job. Jeff, we have to wrap it up. It's my first year working with you. I enjoyed it immensely, and I sure look forward to next year already. I'd like to remind everybody, stay tuned, because we're going to have high school basketball on Cube. You and Craig Taylor, and you guys will do a great job. I'm going to listen to you. That sounds good, Jeff. You know, I'd like to thank our entire crew, uh, from Sam Torrey, our director, and Dan Hawk, our statistician, Dave Shottlecotty, our floor director. We're going to show you all their names. Rick Taffer, our producer, uh, executive producer, Taffer and uh, uh, John Petrie and Ali Sherman and everybody. But instead of me telling you, why don't you just read them when they come up in a moment. Again, you can see Kenton McKinley exploding in jubilation because they have just won the 1981 state championship in Ohio high school football. That just about wraps up our exclusive live coverage of the Division I finale from the Akron Rubber Bowl. The final score, Canton McKinley 13 and Cincinnati Moeller nothing. Now, this concludes Cube's coverage of high school football for the 1981 season. We've enjoyed it, and we all want to thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, we'll be bringing it to you again next year. Thanks to the other cable systems in Columbus, All-American, Coaxial, and KBLE for carrying Cube's coverage of the playoffs. We hope you enjoyed it very much. Cube viewers, don't forget to join us as we jump into the high school basketball season with our Game of the Week this Friday, December 4th, uh, December 4th, between Upper Arlington and Westland. Game time is 8 o'clock live right here on Cube T1. For Jeff Logan, this is Pat Hughes for the final time in the 1981 high school football season, saying so long from the Akron Rubber Bowl once again in the state championship. The final score, the Canton McKinley Bulldogs 13, the Cincinnati Moeller Fighting Crusaders nothing. <laughs>